This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. You know, let me, uh, you know, obviously that is the 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 elephant in the room, right? So let's, because uh, I'm hoping that we kind of get past this loser and we can move on and and make no mistakes about it. All right. Brian Flores is a first class loser. All right. Let's just let's just understand that. Okay. And I've said this before, and I'll continue to say it till I die. This is a this is the worst example for a massive problem that the NFL has. Just like Colin Kaepernick was a massive problem to have to represent an issue that clearly goes on at times. You got to have the right examples for the right causes. And, you know, one of the things where I have zero respect for Kaepernick and zero respect for Tim Tebow because I lump them in the same, even though two different people, um, they're both polarizing for two different reasons and all of that stuff. But the, the, I don't know, the, uh, what, what's the, what's the, uh, the audacity that these two have, you know, it reminds me a lot of millennials and generation Z's nowadays where there isn't enough sacrifice and there isn't enough, um, commitment, I would say. There's not enough old school in them. You know what I mean? And the the balls that Tim Tebow had to take a tight end job and for uh, um, Urban Liar to give him that opportunity was disgusting at every level. You know, and for Tim Tebow to try to keep forcing the issue of being given a chance at quarterback in the NFL was insulting, just like Colin Kaepernick. And that's the problem with Kaepernick and with Tebow and with Brian Flores. It's an interesting threesome I put together, right? Poor examples. Why? Because Tim Tebow and Colin Kaepernick, they're no Warren Moon. They're no Cam Wake. They're no Mac. They're no Mark Dixon. They're not Jeff Garcia. You know, these people were rejected too. For whatever reason you may think you're rejected. Color, uh, uh, ability, what a character, whatever the hell it is. That you got busted for a bunch of weed. So you're Ricky and you had to go to the, the, the CFL. But then you came back and and Warren Moon came back to go to the Hall of Fame and Cam Wade came back and should be in the ring of honor. Probably will never make the Hall of Fame. I don't think he deserves the Hall of Fame. Quite frankly, he he was a one dimensional defensive end. Can't make the Hall of Fame as a one dimensional defensive end. But he will be in the Dolphin Ring of Honor. He deserves to be in the Dolphin Ring of Honor. Uh, he had that. That's like automatic that he has to be in the Ring of Honor. But all these men were rejected. But when you have a dream, you don't allow people to derail your dream. Right? I mean, I was told at QAM by the guy that's there now, we don't want you anymore. So what am I supposed to do? Cower in a corner and say it's over? Oh, dude. I know I could do it just because that idiot doesn't know. That, that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's it's obvious, right? We've got more sponsors on this podcast than anybody except what? Maybe Joe Rose, right? We've got more sponsors on this podcast than every other show in QAM combined. So apparently I know a hell of a lot more than, than some guy named Wiener. I mean, name guy's name Wiener. 
anyway, so you don't allow people to deny you of your dream. And if you have the ability, you will shine either way. You will find a way. And Warren Moon found a way. And Cam Wake found a way. And Mark Dixon found a way. But Colin Kaepernick kept crying like a little bitch that he's not getting a chance, but he didn't go back. He didn't go to the CFL to go prove it because he really can't because he's really not that good. He had a nice little run, just like Nick Foles, just like many other quarterbacks. Didn't make them a real quarterback. And in the end, Colin Kaepernick was a little coward and a little bitch, just like Tim Tebow was a little coward and a little bitch and they didn't want to go to the CFL to go prove people wrong. Because if they go to the CFL and ball out, what happens? The NFL has to sign you. But Colin and, and, and Tim Tebow, you know, it's the very, it's a very millennial generation Z nowadays, what they what they're doing. Very generation Z, very millennial. I mean, it couldn't be more millennial, the crap that they're pulling. Like, no, I'm above going to the CFL. F you, dude. Who the hell are you, Tim Tebow? Why? Because you got a lucky pass to a cross to a crossing route that allowed you to, you know, Demarius Thomas and, and you beat the Pittsburgh Steelers? Get the hell out of here, dude. Go to the CFL and prove you can be a quarterback. And he had the balls to come back later on in the NFL after he failed in baseball to take somebody else's job as a tight end. I mean. You know, that, that's disgusting. So now let me bring it full circle to Brian Flores, who is just garbage. This is a serious problem. Okay? This is a, an incredibly serious problem that the NFL has when it comes to hiring and equality. I know it. You know it. But Brian Flores is not the guy that you use to represent it. You use Eric Bieniemy, you use Tony Dungy, you use Marvin Lewis. These are the people that you want to use. The quality individuals that are waiting and doing it with class. Remember, Brian Flores is the loser that got a PR guy fired on the Dolphins. This is a, forget the angry black man thing that they want to, he's just an angry man. Period. End of story. And he didn't get hired because this is a guy that was going behind the scenes and trying to stab his, his GM in the back. This is a guy that is so petty that had to fire a PR director. And if you're going to sue somebody, you're going to also ask him for a job? Get the F out of here, bro. Where were you born? In what world? You know, we I had Marcel on yesterday, and he actually thought that, you know, there's some hope. And, you know, I, if you go look at the video, I smile at it. Because, you know, bro, I'm 55, my man. I've been through life. I know what life is all about. I know the PR games. You know, and when he goes to go, well, Eric Allen got, man, eh, that's a PR game, dude. That's the old white guys playing a PR game and say, yeah, yeah, we'll give Eric Allen because he's nothing. He means nothing. We'll give him the job and we'll win a little PR on our side. This chess pieces. And they're nothing but pawns to these 32 owners. Come on, man. Let's wake up here. Brian Flores is not a good person. He can put any image he wants in front of you. But behind the scenes, he was a tyrant. And in front of the scenes, he was embarrassing players in front of everybody else like he did with Kenny Stills, which was a complete dick move on his part. So Brian Flores was never going to get a job. He was only a finalist because it's just the game that they're playing. And unless Brian Flores has real evidence that Ross offered $100,000, 
if he doesn't have anything tangible, it's over. He's got no shot at proving anything on the race side. Nothing. He's going to get crushed on the race side. He only has hope on the pay-for-lose side, and that's it. Brian Flores will never get hired again in the NFL. Those are the facts. That's the reality we live in. If you want to live in, you know, fantasy land, you can go ahead and live in fantasy land. I don't live in fantasy land. I don't play fantasy land. As I've told you the story before, when the guy that's there at QAM took over and I had a meeting, I knew I was getting fired 11 months from that, from then. I knew it because I don't F around, dude. I, I, I see through people's bull most of the time. I'm not perfect because I'm going to get fooled too because we all do. But most of the time, I know the BS, man. I know the game that's being played. I'm old enough to have seen it. And Brian Flores was never getting a job. And, to, and, and the statement he put out was disgusting was irresponsible, and it convinced me even more that his ass is going to get crushed because he doesn't have real lawyers. He has his friends. If he had, like, real lawyers, they wouldn't do stuff like this. Joint statement from Douglas H. Wigder, uh, John, whatever that guy's name is, and Brian Flores, the two attorneys, in response to the Texans' head coach announcement. Mr. Flores is happy to hear that the Texans have hired a black head coach, Lovey Smith, as Mr. Flores' goal is bringing his case to provide real opportunities for black and minority candidates to be considered for coaching executive positions within the NFL. However, we would be remiss not to mention that Mr. Flores was one of three finalists for the Texans head coaching position. And after a great interview, what, on your opinion, it's a great interview? How do you know? Uh, and mutual interest, it's obvious that the only reason Mr. Flores was not selected was his decision to stand up against racial inequality across the NFL. And to that, I say, no shit. So in other words, Lovey Smith only got hired because I'm suing. Because, of course, if I wasn't suing, well, you know, I would have been hired. There's no way you hired Lovey Smith over me. The only reason you hired Lovey Smith, it's because I'm suing the league. But that black coach is not better than this black coach. Way to go, Brian. Way to way to support your own, dude. That's awesome, Brian. That's fantastic, dude. You know, that that's a real classy move on your part. If I'm Lovey Smith. I'm really loving that endorsement today. If I'm Lovey Smith, I can't wait to see you and congratulate you with an American bird. Seriously, like, th th it's not a very bright attorney group there. Not a bright coach either. I watched him challenges. Okay, so it, when you want to fight for a cause you use the right people to fight for your cause let's understand that all right and if we're going to fight for black coaches we're going to fight for eric Bieniemy, who i don't know what the hell is going on but you know that guy's done everything and by the way that latest report that he want that he may think of leaving when his contract is up to go be an oc somewhere else best thing that he can do get away from andy reed go prove yourself somewhere else oh my god is that like cfl go prove yourself somewhere else wow oh my god you have to do those things in life damn i did not know that i did not know that you if 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 you don't want to work in radio you got to try to prove yourself on another on another format and another platform damn 
Didn't know that. I wonder with our numbers now, if Sean and I can say, well, you know, we'd like to get a job at an AM station. Look, here's our numbers. You think they'll hire us? Yeah. 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 Look, look at all the sponsors we have. Look at our numbers. Anybody in your station have those numbers? No. Okay. Let's uh, let's uh, agree on a deal. No, I'm not doing that, by the way. I'm just saying. Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong with proving yourself in other ways. And I commend Eric Bieniemy to do that because if he goes somewhere else and he kicks ass as an OC and you don't hire him, then all hell needs to break loose. That's the kind of stuff that you need. But the guy that already had a chance, the guy that was backstabbing his GM, the guy that was embarrassing players, the guy that couldn't build a staff, the guy that was so petty, had to, had to fire a PR, a PR guy on his team, the guy that was so petty that he's worried about something that got out and he's and he's threatening to fire people and all that stuff. That guy, that that's the guy you want to 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 uh to you know represent your cause. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's the that's the perfect example. I bet you. Oh, by the way, hey Sean, have you heard any names joining that Brian Flores lawsuit? Because those two lawyers, I mean, they are attention whores, right? You would figure if there's a prominent name that joins the Brian Flores lawsuit, they would be mentioned. Well, let me hear it. We're, I, I'd love to know the prominent names that are joining the Brian Flores lawsuit. You don't use Jesse Smollett to represent people who are being abused and beaten because they're black or Asian or gay or whatever it is, right? You don't use Casey Anthony for bad parenting. And you don't want her trying to explain what bad parenting is all about, right? For those of you who don't know, Casey Anthony killed a child and got away with it, basically. If we're going to use people for causes and for examples, let's use the right ones. Okay. Tim Tebow is not the guy that I feel sorry for because, oh, he didn't get enough of a chance. No, he got more than enough of a chance than he deserved. And he should have been sent down to the CFL years and years and years ago. But his coward ass didn't want to go there because, you know, he wanted to be given it to him, just like Kaepernick, given to him. And for those of you that maybe were born in the last 20 years, this is nothing new. Players get on a little bit of Mark Rippon got on a better role than Colin Kaepernick because he won a Super Bowl. Doesn't make him a good quarterback. He was on a roll for a couple of years, put up some decent stats. Solid. Nothing special, but he had his run in the sun, and he got a title. So Joe Gibbs helped him out. Quarterbacks get on a run, bro. Greg Anderson got on a run. Right? Was it Greg Anderson, the guy in Cleveland? They gave him a contract, and then he never could live up to it. This is nothing new. I've watched it for years, for decades. And that's the problem with the Colin Kaepernick thing. People got enamored in those two years that he had some success because that was a loaded-ass team. But after he lost his job to sorry-ass Blaine Gabbard and all that, he could have easily gone to the CFL to go prove people, no, I am a great quarterback. Watch, I'll show you, like Warren Moon did, who was shunned by the NFL, went to the CFL, came back, and went to the Hall of Fame. So what, is Colin or Tebow better than Warren Moon? Let's use the right people for the right examples, for the right causes. Let's not put the wrong people in front for the, for the right causes. Because the cause does not get helped. Right? And that's the problem. So if you want to help your cause, get the right people to represent it. 
Brian Flores is not the guy you want representing why we have a problem in the NFL with racial inequality on 31 teams, by the way. Dolphins are not included in that. Okay. Minority general manager hires two minority personnel directors. Those three guys hire a minority head coach. Those three guys fire the minority head coach. Those three guys hire another minority head coach. So the 31 teams in the NFL have a minority hiring problem. You go walk into that Dolphin building and you'll see diversity all over the damn place. Dolphins don't have a minority issue. They, they, they have an equality issue at the Dolphins. That's their problem. It's a nice problem to have, by the way. They give jobs to everyone. No matter how you look, what sex you are, all of that. Go look at that building. No matter the color, sex, whatever, they're all over the place. So the 31 teams may have a problem in hiring. The Dolphins are not one of those. I just want to make sure I mention that because uh, I don't know if Stephen Ross offered 100 grand or not. If he did, then he loses the team and get his ass out of here. Uh, if he didn't and Brian Flores doesn't have any proof, then we move on and that's it. But let's the, the Dolphins are not included in this home. They are an example, by the way, of what I'm talking about right now. If you want an example in the NFL and when they have their meetings of hiring and equality, the Miami Dolphins should be their example. We're not the example of winning right now, okay? But we are the example of equality. That I will give our Miami Dolphins. They don't have a, a, a problem with minority hiring.